What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing what it's like going for the Marksman Ribbon at Air Force Basic Military Training. But before we get into the details, let's cover some of the basics. My name is Michael Enden and I'm an Airman in the United States Air Force. I upload a video every Monday, so if you like military and or Air Force content, definitely hit the subscribe button and make sure you're turning the notification bell to on so you know when I upload a brand new video. Without further ado, let's jump in. So now is the time to discuss the thing that a lot of you guys have actually been asking me about, is how to get that Marksman Ribbon. Now, the Marksman Ribbon is determined upon your performance at a section of BMT, or more specifically, a section of BEAST called CATM. And the acronym C-A-T-M, or CATM, stands for Combat Arms training and maintenance. Now, a little bit of your CADM experience, of course, starts much earlier during your basic training experience when you are provided your trainer weapon and you are taught how to break that weapon apart and put it back together by your MTI. But a lot later during BMT, when you go out to Beast, and of course, if you follow a lot of the videos on my channel, you know that Beast was probably my most favorite time of basic training. <laughs> Anywho, when you go to Beast, there is a formal element of Beast called CATM in which your flight is going to be transported to another area uh, within the Beast complex and you are going to more officially uh, learn how to use your weapon and then of course get an opportunity to showcase what you've learned and see if you qualify for the highly reputable and I guess coveted marksman ribbon, indicating that you are a really good shot. <laughs> so let's break it down a little bit more and also talk about my experience and if I was able to get the marksman ribbon. The day my flight was scheduled to go to CADM during our time at Beast, uh, it really doesn't matter what day it was because I don't even remember what day it was, but just know that the day started off with a long march. Clearly, that is a theme of special classes that you have to take at Beast. It's either a long bus ride with a long march at the end, or maybe just a long march from the get. So, there was a long march to where Cadam is taught after said long march through the sand to get to our end location. We then went into the building and waited for it seemed like 20 minutes before our class started. I don't know if we got there really early, I don't know what's going on, but just know it didn't start for a good 20 minutes. Eventually we were, we were able to file into the classrooms and that's when the academic portion of CADM began. So the academic portion of CADM actually mirrored a lot of the things that you had already learned or reviewed earlier during BMT. And so when we stepped into the classroom, like I said, uh, after a little bit of a wait, we then started to review uh, the names for all the components of the weapon, how to break them apart from each other, meaning break the weapon down, and then of course, how to put the weapon back together. Following that portion of the course, we then went into how to properly handle the weapon. So where is the safety? How do you turn it off and on? Uh, how to, where to put your left and right hand or vice versa, depending on which is your dominant hand. And then after kind of reviewing academically those two groupings of topics and lessons, AKA components of a weapon and weapons handling, that is when then when we started rehearsing or practicing um, how to do it. So we spent, let's say 10 to 15 minutes, maybe 20, I don't remember, uh, breaking the weapon down and putting it back together and just getting quicker and quicker at that. Uh, it's worth mentioning we were actually using an M16 uh, weapon, so now you know. And then of course, how to properly hold the weapon. So once we broke it down and put it back together a few times, that is when we transitioned into making sure that each person in the classroom had a quick check with the MTI or let's say the senior airman to make sure we are holding the weapon correctly so that later in the afternoon when we would actually be you know discharging the weapon we weren't looking a mess and doing it unsafely <laughs> following this academic portion we then had a lunch break uh, so as you would expect from any beast experience our lunch break did include mres 
And so we exited the um, Cadam or Weapons Lessons building pretty much through the back. And then we had our lunches pretty much in like little pods or little clicks and just enjoyed our lunch and enjoyed our little chemical microwaves. <laughs> we just did our thing and our different clicks pretty much on the pavement. <laughs> I don't think there were any chairs. I mean, there definitely weren't any chairs. I don't think I saw any bleachers. At least behind this building, there weren't any bleachers. So if I remember correctly, we were all just sitting on the ground. And this is important because you actually are not allowed to use the heat up uh, portion of an MRE in a building because I, I'm pretty sure it could burn the building down. <laughs> but it's safe enough for us to use, sure. We all had to eat our MREs outside. And so it was, let's say a 30 minute break, 40 minute break, 45 minute break, something like that, where we just chit chatted, relaxed, and kind of started getting more excited, either nervous or excited or both about how we would do for the actual, you know, firing of our weapons, who among us would actually get marksmen and get to graduate basic military training with the marksman ribbon, saying that you, you got it like that. You really are that good. After everyone finished their lunch, we all filed back into the building and then we were separated or really more organized into different groups, depending upon where your last name fell in the alphabet. And then your group stood up and exited outside of the building, um, continuing on the line outside of the building, pretty much behind the Cadham building, got longer and longer until we were all in a line. And then we were marched over to the actual firing range. Now, the caveat here is my flight when I went through basic training, the firing range was actually down. <laughs> So I guess we went to like the backup firing range. I don't really know where we were. I'm pretty sure we were firing weapons, but maybe they weren't real bullets. They were like pellets. I don't know. I'm pretty sure we were not firing real bullets because the firing range was going through something at that time. So, but in your experience, you will then go to the formal firing range, assuming it is open when you go. <laughs> but we were marched over to the other firing range, which of course, I don't believe real bullets are used. So we used faux bullets, F-A-U-X, faux. <laughs> and so after being marched over to the faux firing range, we then were separated um, into lines that I don't think had more than like four people in them because there were a lot of slots in this firing range that of course people would fire from. So thus we divided into groups of lines of like four or five people so that each line, once the fifth person, person, person went, the entire, you know, group had already gone. That would be the end. So there would be five groups of people firing in let's say 20 stalls. So 20 people across, five people back, and that's how it will go. Um, I eventually, um, found the stall that I was assigned to, and I think I was the second person to go. Um, the, you don't really know how well the person in front of you is doing just because the sheet that they're firing at, you know, the, the, the target, <laughs> you're kind of far away from it. So even though they are using, you know, their best judgment to hit it, and they probably have a good gauge on exactly, you know, how close they are to their target and thus, if it hits a bit, how well they're doing. When you're not quite up yet, you can't quite tell if they're hitting their targets or not. But at the end of the round, you do have your, you know, piece of paper brought to you to see how you did. Once it is your turn to start firing, if I remember correctly, there are three or four different, um, you know, oh yes, shooting positions that you are going to do. So. The first will be on your chest. So when you're, you're on the ground holding your weapon um, and firing at your piece of paper with targets on them. Uh, one of the other ones is going to be kneeling. So think of proposing to someone. You're going to be kneeling. So one knee down, one knee up and handling your weapon that way. Um, and then the 
third or fourth, once again, I might be forgetting one, but I know one of the final ones is you are standing up. So you are now standing, standing up properly and seeing if you can, you know, shoot the targets from that position. And so, like I said, there's three or four different positions and you have to go through all of them to make sure that you are comfortable doing it. But regardless, your goal is to make sure that you are hitting as many of your shots in the target as you can. Because if you don't, well, mainly it's just embarrassing. <laughs> Not everyone will get marksmen. But if you also miss like 98% of your shots, it's not like anyone's going to be like, you aren't passing BMT. It's just more in your head. You're going to be like, well, hope I never get jumped in an alley. <laughs> Which really, that's not contextually relevant because you're not going to be shooting a rifle uh, if you get jumped in an alley. This got dark. If you are one of those people going for marksman, though, word on the street is that you have to get 22 out of 24 shots exactly in the target and those 24 shots will be divided by three so you need you have eight shots that are going for the largest type of target another eight that are going for the medium sized one and another eight that are going for the smallest size target on that piece of paper and so of those eight you're going for the large one you want all of those hit same for the medium ones but of course statistically speaking you're going to have a few less and then for the smallest targets that are on this big sheet that you're shooting at, you are probably going to miss one or two. <laughs> so I'm wishing you the best across all three of those categories, but just know you can only miss two after, of course, you do a practice round. So you do get a practice round of, let's say, 24. But during the real round of 24 shots, divided across three different sizes of targets, you can only miss two. So if you can't tell, one, I'm wishing you the best. I want you to do very well. So good luck for those people going for marksman. But more importantly, actually less importantly, I clearly did not get marksman. I am not the one. I did pretty well. I'm not gonna lie. I did pretty well, but I am not, you know, I'm not, you know, Neo from The Matrix. I'm not that guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I did pretty well. I will say I surprised myself. I think I got a clean like 19 or 20. So I can't be that bad. <laughs> there are worse people out there than me when it comes to shooting. So that is how I did during my time at Catum while at Beast. Um, I'm sure you have it in you to either do as well or better. It really just depends on what kind of day you're having that day. You know, if you're feeling under the weather, oof, that's triggering. But anywho, if you're feeling under the weather, <laughs> I'm laughing because I said that's triggering and we're talking about firing weapons. <laughs> anywho, if you're feeling under the weather, your aim may not be that great. So it just depends on how much sleep you get, how focused you are that day, and if also how much, you know, whether it be natural ability and or prior experience you have. Those factors are going to come into play. But I'm just glad I can say that I didn't suck and I hope you can say the same thing after your time at Cattle. <laughs> Best of luck and in conclusion, thank you so much for joining me again this week to talk about Cattle, but also just to spend some time with me. Uh, if you want to see a little bit more of this face, you can find me on Instagram or Twitter at Michael A. Inman underscore. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like. And also, per usual, I will be seeing you next week.